This is right. It just feels right. Yeah. It does. Right. We're counting down again. Canned rock music. You know, on Friday, I I, I should have brought it up. But we didn't have the canned rock music with the countdown. It was a little off. It was okay. jarring. So it was just the countdown? Yes. Oh, my God. What would we do without our canned rock music, Mace? I don't know. We'd uh, wither and die. <laughs> was that an Allison Chain song? Anyway. No, it was uh, from. It may have been, but I know it was from The Simpsons when um, uh, the family goes to the big city, capital city, because Homer gets a job as the uh, mascot for the capital city baseball team, and bombs spectacularly, and so. That's Lisa facing having to go back to Springfield after having experienced the bright lights in the big city of Capital City. Mm. Yes. We're here for you. It is Orange and Blue today. Cecil Lammy, Andrew Mason. Get to my Wyoming Pro Day thoughts in just a little bit. But Mace, we got to talk about the madness that is Mock Draft Madness because no matter where you go and wherever you and I go, we're a team, baby. Um, People talk about us and then people go, what are the Broncos going to do? We're yeah. all guessing, Mace. You know what? Your guess is as good as mine. My guess is as good as Mel Kiper Jr.'s or Daniel Jeremiah's. It's probably a good thing that nobody really knows what the Broncos are going to do. And if anything's being fed out there, it may be it may well be a smoke screen, right? So this is it's it's a guesswork. I mean, everyone knows they need a quarterback, mm-hmm. but Nobody knows if they're going to take a quarterback, at least in round one, because Sean Payton may have that developmental arrogance to say, well, I can do it with a round three guy. I can do it with Spencer Rattler or Michael Pratt. And that's the variable in here, even though from a marketing perspective, I don't know if a uh, Michael Pratt, Ben DiNucci, Jarrett Stidham quarterback room going into training camp is going to excite Broncos country very much. Right. I don't know if you've seen it on your Twitter, Mace, you probably have, but I've got season ticket holders saying it's gone up a thousand dollars for two seats yes. over the last two years. That's that's bad. This is real. Like the, the price increase on tickets and what the product looks like today. Now, again, you're not playing game on Sunday, so it's not the end point, but you're past the point where you're going to have any huge fixes from the free agent market. Correct. I mean, right. I, I don't think Ryan Tannehill or Carson Wentz is going to save you. And yeah, the customers aren't happy. And it's, that is a perfectly fair and valid view of this right now. And the question is what will bring the customers some satisfaction? I mean, that's a good question because is it a first round pick? Maybe, but not necessarily uh, Bo Nix at number 12. I put a poll out today and we'll get into some of the mock drafts here, but two major mock drafts nationally posted ESPN.com, Mel Kiper Jr., Bo Nix at number 12, Daniel Jeremiah, NFL Network. Brock Bowers, tight end from Georgia. And so I put it out there. Okay, Broncos country, which one you prefer? And there was a slight preference toward Bowers rather than Knicks at number 12. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and fans that are clamoring for quarterback would go, okay, maybe they are rebuilding or tanking. Mm-hmm. I just don't see how they could tank uh, because of Sean Payton. Sean Payton's too good. He'll win five games with Jared Stidham starting 17 games. That's my opinion, Mace. I, mm-hmm. And you're going to be in the same position where you have to use draft capital or players to move up in the draft for a lesser quarterback class. Shadur's there at number one, but unless you can tell me you're getting number one, Shadur Sanders is a pipe dream. Yeah, and uh, what's your opinion on Carson Beck at this point? Yeah, I need to see more. <laughs> Quinn yeah. Ewers, right? Like, we need to see more. Like, okay, mm-hmm. guys will work their way in, Mace, but... Bo mm-hmm. Nix has been there. That's the nice thing about Nix to me and May, especially, right? And and I was at the Wyoming Pro Day. I was talking to people about Josh Allen. Like, Allen's last year at Wyoming wasn't as good as the previous year. Well, you could say that about May. You could say that about Caleb Williams, honestly. And you could say mm-hmm. that maybe a little bit about Bo Nix. But, like, these guys have been first-rounders. We've seen it for a while. Not need to see more. 
We knew Bo Nix was going to be a first rounder a couple of years ago. We knew Drake May. You knew Drake May was going to be a first rounder when he's backing up Sam Howell. But like, we've seen these guys. This is the time to strike. It is, and and that's the thing. You're sitting there with a number twelve overall pick in a year that is legit five quarterbacks in the first round. I think mm-hmm. the and with Bo Nix in particular, because it seems like that's he's the flashpoint of discussions right now, especially if you stay at twelve. The question then becomes, all right, does he happen to fit your scheme better than he would other teams? I think there is an argument that Bo Nix fits what Sean Payton wants to do more than he would fit other coaches because it is rhythm, timing, quick process, bam, out. And the arm talent isn't Drake May arm talent. But Sean Payton won an awful lot of games with Drew Brees being a precise but not the strongest armed of quarterbacks. But a quarterback who was precise but, you know, didn't have a cannon. Can Bo, I mean, and that's where, even though I don't want to make the Bo Nix, Drew Brees comparison, but I think that's unfair to Bo Nix. We got to right, see if it, sure. we got, we got to see if it translates under duress in the NFL. Because again, a lot of things working against him, against him senior ball week, but he did not look good under pressure that week. So it's, it's not, you're not going to get a known commodity. It's just, can you find a quarterback who minimizes the risk of being a washout? That's, a, that's what I think you're starting with here. And I think uh, that's where Bo Nix and the vast amount of experience that he has and the fact that he is a rhythm and timing quarterback that may have some appeal to the Broncos. Right. And the whole J.J. McCarthy thing, Mace, it just seems like that's Minnesota. I mean, it seems like mm-hmm. they're locked in. As soon as they can trade for number four, perhaps mm-hmm. number three, I mean, that's everyone. And there were 28 teams, I believe, at Wyoming's mm-hmm. Pro Day today. Everyone's saying it's Minnesota, except for the yeah. Minnesota guys who are just like, I don't know. Like, yeah, you know. You know, it's Minnesota with McCarthy. And what's interesting, I was talking to one of my favorite evaluators. You know what's great about a three-hour road trip, Mace? Lots of time on the phone. Um, So I was talking to one of my favorite quarterback evaluators as he was driving to Boulder. I was like, Mm -hmm. I can skip Boulder this year. Anyway, he compared J.J. McCarthy to Jake Plummer. And I was like, okay, I don't see that, but that's interesting to have a Jake Plummer type of like, he doesn't do everything perfect and he can move around and some of the throws Mm -hmm. will be a little off, but like, He's going to fight for it, and guys are going to rally around him. Like, J.D. McCarthy's great. I just don't think the Broncos will be in position to get him. You know, the funny thing is there have been some J.J. McCarthy, Jim Harbaugh comparisons. Harbaugh, the player, also right. University of Michigan quarterback all the way back in the 1980s. Yes. I think McCarthy's got a little more in his arm than Jim Harbaugh did. I'm just old enough to remember Jim Harbaugh quarterback in at Michigan, and then remember him quarterbacking, of course, the Chicago Bears, Indianapolis Colts. Um, right. And actually, he was still kicking into the early 2000s uh, with uh, San Diego, I believe. He hung, our, he hung around a long time in the yeah. league, but right. a backup by the end. Yeah. You remember that pass, the Hail Mary in Pittsburgh? That... Yeah, that was uh, January 96. Yep. Yeah. I think that guy caught yeah. it, too. I can't remember who it was, I think, it was I think he Bailey. caught it. I think it was Quinn, Quinn Bailey. Bailey. You're right. You're right. Yep. I I... He caught it. They didn't call it. I don't think he caught it. You don't think he caught it? It was, it was like on swear, his stomach. I could swear I saw the ball. I saw the ball on the ground. Okay. Well, I'll take it. That humanity. This comment here, interesting. Uh, fans need to start pushing back. A rest of their precious sellout streak might make them stop and think. Um, that sellout streak's not at risk. And one of the right. things going for the Broncos is they have an exceptionally long season ticket waiting list. Now, Washington once had an exceptionally long season ticket waiting list and gradually that went away, but it, that wasn't just on field. That was also off field malfeasance. Yes. That was, um, that was Daniel Snyder charging people for admission to training camp. There's actually, if you Google it, there is a guide to all the things that Dan Snyder did wrong as Washington's owner that covers car charging for training camp, try, you know, ridiculous markup on items, even selling expired peanuts. And the reason (laughs) they knew they were expired is 
because they bore the logo of an airline, Independence Air, that had gone under a year earlier. Wow. And yet they were still selling those peanuts. In on this page, there's even something about how they saw people they saw vendors selling beer in the bathroom. <laughs> oh my god. So that's it was much more than football going on in Washington. I don't think you're gonna see that in Denver. That that sort of thing. Yeah. But but this is going hey, you know, the Walton Penner group didn't start the fire, but They've inherited, you know, they're trying, they're trying to burn, they're trying to fight it right now. And they're struggling with that. They're absolutely, they're, they're, they're at least the football thing. And I think, look, I I think Sean Payton has a plan, but the problem is, is that plan something that this fan base is going to be patient with? And that's a real question. That, That is a real question right now is whether, there's going to be the, the patience and grace given to this. And I think that's where a first round rookie quarterback, even if it is Bo Nix, which mm-hmm. by the way, he should be a top 15 pick. So for like a, cause I heard Mel Kuyper last night on ESPN with field Yates, both fantastic gentlemen, but Mel was like, that's overdrafting for uh, no, it's not Bo Nix is a mm-hmm. top 15 pick. Yeah. So like if he goes 12, that's not overdrafting him. Uh, you know, drafting Kenny Pickett at 20 was too high. Drafting EJ Manuel at 15 or whatever the number was, that was too high. Taking Bo Nix at 12 is not overdrafting. It's making the pick, and yeah, it's the fifth quarterback off the board, but it's making the pick at the appropriate time. I mean, do we want to go like QB5, QB6? Do we want to go back to 2018 when Lamar Jackson was QB5? Yeah. If he, It doesn't matter who he is on the consensus board that says QB5, QB4, QB6, whatever. It matters where he is on your board, and I'm going to sound like you, how that player fits. That's the key thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure we're having these discussions about Bo Nix if there aren't the traits that have been proven to succeed in what Sean Payton wants to do schematically. Well, and what is it, Lance Zerline, who I think is one of the greatest men of, on the planet right now? He's so kind, like shirt off your back type of guy. So much mm-hmm. knowledge about this game. Of course, radio host down in Houston writes up the draft profiles for NFL.com. He said on Twitter a couple of days ago, Mace, like the way the public looks at quarterbacks is almost completely different from the way that NFL teams are looking at these quarterbacks. So, Caleb Williams is probably the number one for most everybody out there, but Bo Nix might be somebody's number two. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't heard that, but the way teams look at these guys and and again, the evaluator I was talking to on the phone, driving back from Laramie today, he said, Nix is the highest floor, lowest ceiling of any of these top five quarterbacks. Okay. Well you get, you kind of know what you're going to get with Bo Nix. And that because of that Mace, I think he could start right away. I think he could start right away too, because of that. And, it's just a matter of getting him up to speed in terms of the nomenclature of the system and getting the rhythm and timing down. Now, that being said, the low ceiling, this is something that is a that is a valid thing to note here, is that does a low ceiling quarterback really warrant being picked at 12? That's, that is a fair question. But I would also say this when we're talking about low ceiling, what is the low ceiling, especially in the in a Sean Payton offense? Right. Does a low ceiling look like Teddy Bridgewater running this offense back in 2019 in New Orleans? Does it look like Jameis Winston early in the 2021 season? You could argue that that sort of ceiling, once you get enough skill talent around is still something with which you can win and have a lot of success. Right. Right. We'll see uh, what happens there. Jeremy wants to know what about Penix? Penix has some buzz. He can spin it. He can spin it so nicely. Mm -hmm. Um, I could even make the argument that just pure arm talent, he's the Mm -hmm. best in this draft. Now that's above Caleb Williams. I can make that argument. I don't believe that, but Penix, the, the talent, it's the injuries. He got a great deal of health. For two years at Washington, he's being healthy. Sure. Um, but I think he goes off the board in the 30s. 
not in the teens or certainly at 12 with the Broncos. If he had a clean bill of health, where would he go? Top 10. There you go. Yeah. So you'd be having to move up to get him. <laughs> and then Bo Nix would be QB6. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Without medicals, Penix is more talented. I mean, the dude could just rip it. He could just absolutely sling it. It's a thing of beauty to watch, and he knows where to put it, too. Um, it's just that health, man. And, yes, that's a weird motion. It's, you know, sidearm, left-handed, looks weird type stuff, but whatever. Philip Rivers looked weird. Mm-hmm. He started 15 years in the NFL with a weird, funky motion. It was yep. pretty good for most of that time. Actually, yep. he could say, actually pretty good for, basically for his entire career, even his last year was good enough to guide the Colts to the playoffs, their most recent playoff appearance. So, yeah, that, trying to change the motion, that, that's not something that is advisable once you've had a quarterback who's gotten this level. Remember, the Broncos trying to change Brock Osweiler's motion, right, because he was six foot seven and he tended to sidearm and hit a, you know, came out, came out low. And, uh, I spent a few years working on that, and it didn't really take, especially under duress. Yeah, yeah. You kind of just are where you are when you come into this league, so can you work with that? On the Bowers conversation, Mace, let's unpack that a little bit more because we're going over the mock draft madness on today's show, Orange Blue Today. Make sure to like and comment for YouTube purposes. Is 12, and, and it's crazy I'm going to say this, but I have to toss it this way. Brock Bowers, to me, is the third most talented player in this class. But based on the fact that you don't get a discount for taking a tight end near the top 10, not at all. There's no QB discount like you do when you take a rookie quarterback and you've got that runway with a rookie quarterback. Rookie tight ends in the top 10 or near the top 10 get paid close enough to what franchise tag tight ends get. And I believe it was Daniel Jeremiah that brought this up first on the conference call, Maze. Correct me if I'm wrong. But is it, I don't know, wrong headed? Because Sam Laporta was a first round pick. He didn't go in the first round. I believe Trey McBride was a first round pick. He didn't go in the first round. Bowers will go in the first round. But at 12, is that not getting the positional value that you can from having, hey, if Bo Nix hits, even with the limited ceiling, if Bo Nix hits on a rookie contract, you're gold, Jerry. And don't forget, tight end, especially from pass catching perspective, is ultimately a dependent position. Because mm -hmm. look where Atlanta took Kyle Pitts. Atlanta's never had the quarterback to work with Kyle Pitts. Right. And thus Pitts, despite the mountain of talent that he possesses, and you see those flashes from time to time, doesn't have a quarterback who can consistently get him the football. I think that's about to change with Kirk Cousins walking in that building. It's one of the reasons why the Falcons are going to be one of the most fascinating teams in the NFL this year. Because mm -hmm. if Cousins maximizes Kyle Pitts with what they've got at the running back position – that's an offense that could be something special. It could make your guy, Zach Robinson, head coach, a head coach candidate about 10 months from now. Yeah, I'd like that. I think that would be cool, man. Um, we'll see if it actually happens wherever we go. The quarterback conversation follows. Uh, mm -hmm. There are other conversations, yep. though, uh, and that revolves around, I don't know, Wyoming Pro Day. You got any more to say about mock drafts, or do you want to get to uh, Pro Day stuff here? I mean, it's just – it's fascinating to look at this situation. The Broncos, unfortunately, they're kind of in a no-man's land picking at number 12. That's why it's fair to say maybe they didn't do themselves any favors with that five-game winning streak last year. Yeah, yeah. You're one in five. It's right there in front of you. And then we'd be in the May conversation. May, And this is where – and I think this is what Lance Zierlein was talking about specifically about May – there's a lot of fans that will get things wrong about Drake May. And the dude can absolutely sling it. And he can make full field reads. He can throw with touch. He's athletic. There's a lot to like there. Does he play hero ball? Yes. Does he turn the ball over sometimes? Yes. Was he playing with a bunch of nothing in North Carolina? Yes. Yes. Like, uh, you look at May and you go, in the right system, that would look really good. So, I, I, and you, you know, people always ask us, like, oh, he's Drake May's falling. Yeah, he's falling to five. He's not falling, everybody. He's just kind of, you know, he's not going to be the number two pick yeah. that we know of. Washington yeah. could throw us a curveball and just take Drake May and say he's the guy. 
By the way, do you know where the Broncos would pick if they finished four and thirteen last year? Uh, let me guess. Five. Two. Oh my god. Because of strength of schedule tiebreaker, four eighty eight. Oh my Everyone god. Everyone at Washington, New England, Arizona, all four all in four and thirteen had strength of schedules above five hundred. Wow. Oh boy. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Mike asks, don't you get tired of talking about the same thing every day? No. <laughs> I mean, well, the, di- honestly, the, the, the angle on it changes a little bit every day. Is that, mm-hmm. That's the thing. And yeah. why talk about it every day? Let's just say the data is showing in terms of viewership that this is what people want to hear about right now. That it's quarterbacks. We see it in, in our site traffic. We see it in our view- viewership. Yeah. It's, and it's quarterback, the- quarterback, quarterback. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, and our number two search term for our channel is Denver Broncos new QB. Yeah. It's what people want to know, man. Everybody's kind of waiting, and the fact of the matter is three's not moving anytime soon. I don't think New England moves until draft day if they move. And then it comes down to can you break down Arizona at four? Yeah, but and... Minnesota, I bet there's a phone call, like if, if – Let's say George Payton or whoever is working on a deal with Arizona. I bet there's a like, hey, check with me. Whatever Denver offers you, check with me first. I bet Minnesota's saying that. Maybe. Wouldn't that be something considering that George Payton left Minnesota? Yeah. Thanks. How how this game works. But with the Arizona Cardinals, the question is, do they take the haul that could be in front of them? Or – do they stand pat and take Marvin Harrison Jr.? Because Marvin Harrison Jr. is right there for them to take it for in all likelihood. And their receiving core is a mess. They've recommitted to Kyler Murray based on what Kyler did late last season. You know what? Staying at four and picking Marvin Harrison Jr. makes a lot of sense for them. Mm-hmm. And that if that happens, then it's the Chargers at five. And I don't think you're going to be able to make a deal with the Chargers because I don't think they're going to trade – within the division and give a division rival a chance at a quarterback. And then right. the giants might be in the QB conversation as well. So yeah, four, four is where you probably have to do it. But like you said, there's probably a check with me there from the Vikings top brass. Well, and this is what ties into Jeremy's question. Will any of the receivers make it 12? It's a great receiver class, but those big three will be top 10 picks. They're so gone. even if you're Arizona and you're like, we can move back to 12 and still get Roman Dunze. No, you won't. <laughs> He'll be gone. So you can't even sell mm-hmm. that. Like, hey, you guys want Marvin Harrison, but Roma Dunze is really highly talented. And, you know, I could make the argument that the three receivers are the three best players in this draft, regardless of position. Um, and oh, but they're not going to be there at 12. And oh, by the way, it's just a reminder of where the NFL is right now. Because those first 11 picks could be four quarterbacks, four receivers, a tight end, or three receivers, a tight end, two edges, and a pass protecting tackle. Mm-hmm. Any questions as to what's important in this game right now? This draft exactly. is answering the draft is answering it for you. Yeah. And the Broncos are out of reach. Okay. Unless they're willing to sacrifice something that I don't think they'll sacrifice. Yeah. Sertan changes the story. He changes the story. But they're not they're not gonna shop Sertan. No, so. they're not trading. Him. They're not trading. Him. No, they're not trading him, everybody. So maybe the chances of Brock Bowers are better than we think. Maybe your 57% is right, and my 95% is crazy. I've been known to say crazy things from time to time, Mace. If my 50%, 7% is right, though, they'd have to be a quarterback because I, it's just, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm farther from wrong than you would be if they don't go quarterback. That's how I would phrase it. Okay. Not that I'm right. I'm farther from wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if loving you was wrong, I don't want to be, right. be right. Oh, my uh, gosh. You look so that's happy, a- Mace. I know that's from me. That's from doing this show together. I'm the one of the best parts of your day. I appreciate you for that. It's, it, it's, fun, it's fun to chat. And, uh, you know, it's been – it's – it's, it's been it's it's been a it's been a it's been a day. I mean, opening up with the opening up with the mock drafts. And by the way, there's something very interesting media wise. Before we go, I just want to kind of touch on this real quick. This is very much kind of inside baseball type of thing. But 
ESPN for years has dominated the, the, the sports chatter in a day when they've dropped the Mel Kuyper Jr. mock draft. Very interesting the NFL Network tried to kind of seize the thunder by having Daniel Jeremiah's mock draft on the same day as well. Usually there's not that. Like a, a Kuyper mock draft will end up dominating the chatter mm-hmm. in, on social media, podcasts, radio, whatever. Not the case today because you all said Jeremiah checking in. So that's, it was, I thought that was, that was a pretty interesting thing to which I woke up this morning. Strategy. Um, interesting that Cortland Sutton reworks some deal. Interesting that Jerry Judy gets an extension. So like the NFL, mm-hmm. it just never stops, man. Never stops. By the, by the way, Jerry Judy, I mean, those are, they look like big numbers, but that puts him 17th in the league in average annual value for a receiver contract. Receivers are getting expensive. Again, Kind of like the t- positional value in the draft. Where are you getting? Where are you getting a savings? You're getting a saving now if you take a receiver higher, because those elite receivers, as they get to the second contract, uh, twenty million or more. Jerry Judy checks in at, at uh, I believe it's nineteen point three million dollars per year in average annual value. That's okay. That is that a big contract. Yes, it's not even the biggest contract in terms of average annual value on the ground. That's Amari Cooper's. Mm-hmm. So. What happens now with Amari Cooper as well? Where do they go with him? Because he's heading into the last year of his deal. There's a lot of intrigue there. Yep. Uh, super quick because it will be available at denversports.com. You can check out my CSU Pro Day recap. I was in Fort Fun yesterday in Laramie today. I will say super quick that Easton Gibbs um, rehabbed his draft stock. He might go a little bit higher. And by that, I mean like fourth round. Um, than we initially yeah. thought because he had a disappointing uh, performance at the combine. He talked about it today. I'll have the quotes. I'll have more information about it tonight, denversports.com. But that's a player that, um, you know, lots of teams are interested in. And he looked really good in coverage again. Again, I know it's pro day, Mace, but he was moving well. He had a one-handed pick. Like, you know, you you like what you see when the kid's moving like that. And he ran a better 40 today too. And we saw that at the shrine bowl as well. So, I mean, what you're happy what you're seeing today, it's just on, a, on air in underwear, but actually having seen it in, in practice and actual football, that's a positive. And I think uh, might be a little bit of bad news for the Broncos. If he goes round four, because they're sitting there with all that, that fifth round capital, although they could probably take to uh, that, that they could probably take the picks that they got for Jerry Judy and move up. I mean, you may literally be talking about Jerry Judy for Easton Gibbs. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could, and that's why. We're fixing to find out, as Kev says, they schedule a top thirty visit. They already had it. We talked about her on this show last week. I guess I should just tweet everything I learned, Mace. Not everything, because somebody I talked to today, who you're very familiar with, was like, "You don't say anything." And I'm like, "Yeah, because I want you guys to keep talking to me." <laughs> if you're a scout, if you're an evaluator, I'm not going to blab everything you tell me. I'm going to use it. And I'm going to listen and learn. But yeah, I don't. There's a lot of stuff you and I don't say, you know, so mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. I guess when I say it on the show, I should just put it out on Twitter. So you probably, if you say it on the show, I think you have to put it out on Twitter, write a story about it. Yeah. That's, that's sort of the way these things work. Yep. So I'll write a story about it. Uh, Denversports.com about my pro day thoughts. Um, and yes, as we said last week, Easton Gibbs had a three hour lunch with George Payton. So not only a top 30 visit, but a three hour lunch. You tell me what that says about their interest. Exactly. So. Anyway, uh, let's rotate today, Mace. How about that? Let's do it. Okay. I'll start. Help, help us out. Like. Comment. Share. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. So that you never, never miss, miss a uh, vid that's correct he's andrew mason follow him on all the socials i'm at c salami saying obt is bfd we appreciate you all thanks for watching stay tuned and would you please stay frosty